A single wheel can weigh several tons, a single rail hundreds of feet long. How is such monumental strength forged from raw earth? The rail itself, a 330-foot ribbon of steel weighing over 13,000 pounds, endures the passage of tens of thousands of heavy loads without yielding. Crafting this resilience is a feat of modern metallurgy, a long and intricate chain of processes that transforms humble ore into unyielding steel. It begins deep underground, where ore is pulled from the earth, blended with coke and additives, and fed into immense furnaces at searing temperatures. From this inferno, the glowing molten steel is refined and then rolled with inch-perfect precision, shaping its distinct profile of head, web, and foot. The newly formed rail then undergoes critical heat treatments before being welded into continuous lengths stretching hundreds of meters. Finally, it must face a battery of rigorous inspections scrutinized by lasers, x-rays, and ultrasound to prove its flawless integrity. They are arteries of steel, the lifeblood of entire economies. More than just a path for trains, these humble rails are the backbone of a colossal global industry. In the year 2023, the worldwide market for this specialized steel was valued at around $15 billion. Forecasts suggest that figure could climb toward nearly $20 billion by the year 2032. This immense value reflects the scale of investment pouring into railway networks, from the rapidly expanding infrastructure of Asia to the United States, where upgrading over 140,000 miles of track is a strategic priority. The sheer scale of production is even more astonishing. Globally, furnaces churn out approximately 2.1 billion short tons of crude steel every year. Within the United States alone, steel mills maintain outputs in the millions of tons annually, with a significant portion meticulously shaped into rails for both domestic and international markets. But these are no ordinary lengths of metal. Each rail is engineered to endure for more than 20 years, bearing the colossal and repetitive weight of countless passing trains. In this way, every single rail becomes a critical lifeline for modern society, guaranteeing the stability, safety, and efficiency of the entire network it supports. It is the backbone of a nation's arteries, yet its story begins not in a factory, but deep within the earth. The life of a steel rail starts with its most fundamental ingredient, iron ore. To unearth this vital material, massive open pit mines are gouged from the landscape. In these vast pits, hydraulic shovels of immense scale operate, each scoop capable of lifting dozens of tons of rock in a single fluid motion. But before these titans can move, engineers must first drill a precise pattern of holes, plunging dozens of feet into the bedrock. This is a task where accuracy is measured down to the inch. These boreholes are then packed with industrial explosives. The subsequent blast is anything but random. Every charge is carefully calculated to fracture thousands of short tons of rock, while leaving the precious ore inside perfectly intact. Once the dust begins to clear, the massive trucks and shovels move back in, hauling the raw ore to a primary crushing station. In certain geological areas, the pursuit of ore leads miners deep underground. Within a complex network of reinforced tunnels, the material is scraped from the rock face, loaded onto conveyors or small rail cars, and carried to the surface. While machines provide the raw muscle, Human expertise remains the brain of the operation, calculating explosive loads, guiding machinery, and inspecting every load of ore. Each ton that emerges is far more than broken rock. It is the foundation for the steel that will carry trains safely for decades. Once hauled from the mine, the ore cannot be used immediately. The enormous blocks of rock must first pass through an essential step of crushing. Inside the processing plants, powerful steel rollers and hammer mills operate without pause, breaking down boulders weighing tens of tons into small, uniform particles. 
The size of these particles is no accident, but a tightly controlled variable. If the ore pieces are too large, they will not melt completely in the furnace. If they are too fine, the mixture can become unstable during blending. Only when the ore achieves the precise size required can it be moved to the next stage. Here, it is mixed with coke and flux materials in enormous chambers. Giant paddles churn relentlessly, ensuring every grain of ore and additive is distributed with perfect evenness. This stage may seem straightforward, but it is critical for guaranteeing a balanced chemical composition, laying the groundwork for steel with the demanded strength and durability. From these carefully prepared particles, the transformation into steel begins. When the ore has been finely ground and blended in the right proportions, the journey moves into its most critical stage, steel making. This is considered the very heart of the rail production process. Inside the mills, giant electric arc furnaces and towering blast furnaces roar at temperatures above 2,900 degrees, hot enough to transform the solid additives and iron ore into a uniform stream of molten steel. Automated feeding systems measure each batch with pound-level accuracy, while thermal sensors and spectrometers constantly monitor the chemical composition. Heat-resistant robotic arms stir the mix and skim away the impurities that rise to the surface. At this stage, alloying elements like manganese and chromium are introduced at just the right moment, enhancing the rail's strength, its resistance to wear, and its ability to endure extreme loads. A modern electric arc furnace can melt more than 150 tons of steel in less than an hour. But this incredible power comes at a cost. The steel industry alone emits nearly as much CO2 each year as the entire aviation sector. It raises a difficult question. How can we keep building the infrastructure the world needs while reducing the industry's impact on the environment? The result of this stage is molten steel of the highest standard, ready for the next transformation. Only when temperature and composition are kept under such precise control can these steel backbones be created. After leaving the furnace, the liquid steel is finally ready to be cast. It arrives solid and cold, yet fire is about to give it a new, malleable life. Once formed into billets, the steel is sent directly into vast reheating chambers, a critical step for stabilizing its metallic structure before the immense pressures of rolling. Inside these fiery caverns, the temperature is carefully held above 2200 degrees. High-powered burners work in concert with infrared sensors, which constantly scan every point on the billet surface, ensuring the steel never cools too quickly. Even a minor drop in temperature could cause the surface to harden, inviting cracks or deformities during the shaping process. After this thermal stabilization, the billets are conveyed to the rolling preparation line. Here, enormous heat-resistant rollers, powered by hydraulic motors and massive gearboxes, begin to transform their length and cross-section. The system is programmed to precisely modulate the pressure and rotation of each roller pair, distributing force evenly to prevent any localized stress. What makes this stage so extraordinary is the flawless integration of raw mechanics and sophisticated electronics. A central control computer acts as a digital nerve center, gathering real-time data from dozens of sensors to make instantaneous adjustments. Every movement aligns with the precision of a clockwork mechanism, producing billets that are elongated, flattened, and perfectly prepared for their final transformation. Glowing with stored energy, the steel now meets the machines that will give it its final form. As they exit the reheating furnace, the incandescent billets are fed directly into the rolling line. Carried on a system of heat-resistant roller tables, they first plunge into the roughing mill. Here, colossal alloy steel rollers with vast diameters and smooth machine surfaces press down with thousands of tons of force, drastically reducing thickness while stretching the billet's length. From there,
the steel passes through a series of intermediate stands where its profile gradually begins to emerge. The rollers in this section are arranged in alternating positions, compressing and twisting the metal to distribute stress evenly and eliminate any dimensional flaws. Finally, in the finishing mill, rollers etched with specially engineered grooves begin to sculpt the classic I-shaped cross-section of the rail, a design that provides incredible strength while minimizing weight. Throughout each stage of rolling, high-pressure jets of water blast the steel, cooling its surface and stripping away oxide scale in a hiss of steam. Along the line, laser sensors constantly measure height, width, and straightness, feeding real-time data back to the central control system. This digital brain adjusts roller gaps and speeds with microscopic accuracy, locking in the rail's geometry and ensuring every piece meets exacting standards before it moves on. The shape is now set, but inside the steel, a battle of heat and stress still rages. Glowing a deep cherry red from the rolling process, the rails carry significant internal tension that must be resolved. The journey through cooling and heat treatment is what will forge the final, resilient backbone of the product. Immediately after leaving the mills, the rails pass through a high-pressure water spray system, where a dense mist envelopes their entire surface. The speed and volume of this water are meticulously controlled to guarantee uniform cooling along the rail's full length, preventing any warping or cracking. Following this rapid quench, the rails enter the heat treatment area. Here, reheating furnaces are programmed to perform precise cycles of quenching, tempering, or annealing, depending on the desired mechanical properties for the final rail. This careful combination of immediate cooling and controlled reheating does more than just enhance strength and durability. It also ensures the rails retain their distinctive profile with sharp, clean lines and defined edges. It is this stage that gives each rail the resilience to withstand the enormous, repetitive loads of railway traffic for decades, balancing temperature and time to build a product that can serve reliably on the world's most demanding infrastructure. They are born in sections, but they will serve as one unbroken line. Fresh from heat treatment, the finished rails are moved to the welding line where individual lengths are fused into continuous segments. Guiding rollers and laser sensors work in perfect unison, ensuring the ends of each rail align with absolute precision. A high-power arc welder then unleashes a blinding flash of energy, melting the steel edges as hydraulic pressure forces them together into a seamless, permanent bond. Immediately after the weld, an automated grinding system smooths away any excess material, leaving the joined surface perfectly flush with the rest of the rail. The entire operation is orchestrated by a central control system that constantly fine-tunes every variable, from temperature and pressure to timing. The result is a joint so flawless its durability matches that of the solid steel surrounding it. This process transforms shorter, manageable segments into continuous welded rails that can stretch for hundreds of meters. These are the arteries of modern transit, engineered to carry trains at high speeds with minimal vibration, their strength forged to endure for generations. The finished rails are now complete, ready for the final journey to the track. To the eye, it appears perfect, but beneath the surface, hidden truths await discovery. The finished rails now move into the quality inspection area, where every detail is subjected to intense scrutiny. A battery of optical sensors and high-speed cameras glides across the entire surface, capturing images with enough resolution to reveal even the most minuscule scratch. This visual data is then processed by advanced analysis software programmed to detect any deviation in shape, color, or texture. At the same time, the steel's internal structure is probed by ultrasonic devices and X-ray scanners, which search deep within the metal for hidden flaws like internal cracks or gas pockets. 
To complement these scans, randomly selected samples are subjected to a series of rigorous mechanical trials. Here, powerful machines stretch, compress, and press against the steel as hardness testers measure its fundamental resistance to deformation. Every result is meticulously recorded and stored, creating a complete history that allows each rail to be traced back to its specific production batch. Only the rails that meet this full range of criteria earn the final stamp of approval, a confirmation that they are fit for service. Once certified, they are cleared for packaging and distribution, ready to be shipped from the factory to become the arteries of tomorrow's railway lines. They arrive as giants of steel, yet their final placement demands a surgeon's touch. The journey from the factory unfolds on oversized trailers, where each rail is rigidly secured, guarded against the slightest tremor or flex. Upon reaching the construction site, cranes and specialized forklifts carefully hoist the immense steel sections, depositing them into a designated staging area. From this point forward, the work transitions to one that requires human skill and seasoned experience. Guided by structural blueprints, installers meticulously position each segment, employing laser levels and surveying tools to govern the precise alignment and gradient. Temporary joints are first established with bolts, a preliminary step before the final, permanent bond of welding or tightening. A constant chorus of radio chatter fills the air as workers synchronize every movement, ensuring each connection is flawless. While heavy machinery bears the burden of lifting and holding, the critical tasks of fine adjustment, alignment, and finishing rest almost entirely on the coordinated skill of the installation team. It is this painstaking labor that will ultimately define the stability and safety of the entire rail system for the many decades that lie ahead. Beneath layers of protective coating and the permanence of solid welds, the integrity of every steel sheet is secured. It begins as raw ore and ends as the skeleton of a city. Every steel structure embodies hundreds of hours of intense labor a careful marriage between the raw power of machines and the precision of skilled hands. Its journey from the mine to the construction site is a complex one, where each stage helps create the essential backbone for our bridges, factories, and towering skyscrapers. When we look back on this entire process, steel reveals itself as something far greater than a material. It stands as the fundamental architecture of modernization itself.